Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dork out for a while. Hi, I'm Jackie Cation. You are about to listen to the Dork Forest. Let's give you the info about it. First of all, you know the websites. Dorkforest.com, thedorkforest.com, if you like a determiner, jackiecation.com has everything. All of my podcasts, including uh, videos of my stand-up, my stand-up schedule, merchandise you can purchase if you would like, and a lot more info than you possibly even need. Let's do the credits. Mike Rickberg sang and produced and composed that song at the beginning of the show. He sang with his wife, Sarah. It's very beautiful. At the end of the program, he sings his version of the Mexican hat dance. That's Mike Rickberg. Vilmos fixes JackieCation.com. He is uh, the web designer over there. And Patrick Brady fixes the audio. And in this case, there's a video intro. Very exciting. Anyway, those are the websites. If you want to support the show, you're doing it already by listening to it or watching it. And another way is to tell your friends and family, go on iTunes, do a review. Another way is to just give me money. Yeah. You could go use the donate button. You can make it even monthly if you're okay with making things monthly. You do a PayPal monthly. There's a monthly choice on PayPal. The PayPal is a button on the Jackie Cation or the Dork Forest website, and it goes directly to me. Thank you very much. I will use it wisely or foolishly. Your call as well. Now, my email address, Jackie at JackieCation.com, is where you can contact me if you have any questions or concerns and about the Dork Forest. And I do have a Venmo account. It's Jackie hyphen Cation, oddly enough. Another way to support the show is on DorkForest.com and JackieCation.com. There's an Amazon link. And the Amazon link just takes you to Amazon. You order like normal and it supports the show because you came from Jackie Cation or DorkForest.com. Very exciting. Other than that, oh, there are there is a band camp. You can if you have listened to all the episodes that are free and you need more content, there are several live episodes that are at thedorkforest.bandcamp.com. And those cost me a couple of bucks, so I charge a couple of bucks. There's also a storytelling album there that you can listen to some stories that I did live. And there are 17 free episodes before the Dork Forest was pre-recorded. So the audio isn't very good, but the guests were super funny and fun and dorky. So if you want to do that, go to the thedorkforest.bandcamp.com. Other than that, let's see if there are other things that I should be talking about. Possibly uh, the merch. Yeah, if you want to buy merch. The only other thing I want to talk about is the merch. You can get Dork Forest t-shirts. Uh, and you can get stand-up comedy t-shirts. You can get my albums or my DVD over at JackieCation.com slash merch. There's pins, there's a challenge coin, there's a bunch of new things happening over there. Anyway, a lot of information. I think, I don't think I've missed anything, but who cares? Let's get into the show. Hey, it's Jackie Cation over here uh, doing a thing where it's called The Dork Forest. You're familiar with the premise, folks. And uh, I'm with Tess Rafferty. Hello, Tess Rafferty. We've been friends for at least 700 years. How you doing, friend? I'm good. How are you, friend? I am plugging along as we all are. Uh, I have no reason to complain for myself, uh, yeah. but I probably do on a regular basis. So uh, no, Tess Rafferty, heard. comic, writer. writer. Yeah. Uh, TV uh, professional. Uh, that isn't a, I don't know that that's a, that seems sweeping, but it's at Tess Rafferty on Twitter to find out projects and at the Tess Rafferty on Instagram to find out the projects via photos. Um, yeah, yeah, via, sure. yeah, via, yeah, sure. Recipes <laughs> I like to cook, so that there's those pictures of what I like. Instagram is mostly like the in denial place, like where we all go, like to just see, like, oh, look, food, um, oh, new shoes, you know, that that's travel back when yeah. we did those sort of things. Um, yeah. whereas, like, you know, you know, Tess Rafferty on Twitter is more of the bad neighborhood, <laughs> Tess Rafferty. <laughs> The girl oh, your mother yeah. warned you about. I just realized that I'm recording this without my headphones on, so it's going to be both of our audio. 
I think uh, I think Patrick could handle it. I don't. Uh, I think that uh, I got an. Uh, okay, so let's just keep going. I oh. literally weeded off in the middle of your. No, my Instagram is what Instagram is. It's going to be great. People should go there. It's at the Tess Rafferty. It'll be in the notes. But you mentioned the food thing. Here's I am fascinated by so many things, but we have to talk about Italy because it's kind of fancier, and it's okay. kind of real, and it's an actual country, and you seem to have a depth of knowledge of Italy that I uh, admit to being jealous about uh, <laughs> italy a country in europe it's shaped like a boot yes or uh uno stavale as they would call it uno stavalo what yeah. does stavalo mean boot it's a boot yeah <laughs> uh All or, right. wait, no it wouldn't be uno le stavale are the plural for boots so it would be una stavala i guess would be one boot there you go. One boot. One boot, you guys, in Italian. The first time I went to Italy, and that's right, I've been twice. Uh, I asked somebody where the post office was, and I mispronounced uh, Le Ficchio Postale because uh, I took French for too long. And the guy looked at me and he said, Ficchio, Le Ficchio Postale, the post office. It's over there in perfect English. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, and that's and that's the thing. Like, I, I've... I've studied, I actually really kind of geek out about languages and I have a really good head for vocabulary, not so much the grammar. And, sure. um, and I, I, but, but you do like you, you, your mouth gets really tripped up. Like when you're trying to, like when you, if you try to go between French and Spanish and, and Italian and, and half the time people think I'm making fun of them. I'm like, no, I just, I've just studied four languages and I don't even know how to speak any of them well. Like, <laughs> right. So I'm throwing words at you in the hopes that you get what I'm talking about. Yeah. Just, just <laughs> by pronunciation. Um, I felt some, I felt so bad. I was introducing somebody at a, an event and I just was like, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm trying to pronounce your name correctly. Um, I have just fucked up my own, my own tongue inside my mouth, like with like, so trying to pronounce so many different languages poorly that I'm like, it's not you. I really, I'm making every effort to pronounce this name correctly. Right. I, I want so much to be, yeah. be respectful and say your name correctly, but it turns out I'm just going to uh, say it wrong and then hope for the a mouthful of marbles. I hear it here. It does not come out here. I'm so sorry. Right. It is. Uh, but th I mean, that's the whole thing about, about, all the things I think is the learning curve on how to just say things right. And, and, you know, and you're just like, I swear to God, if you say it to me three times and we're around each other enough, I should say your name correctly by the third time. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, but th l the Italian language is very beautiful. I've been watching a fair amount in quarantine here, um, <laughs> like food shows where like that. Did you watch that acid fat Salt, salt, fat, There's, acid, heat. There you go. Um, I, I, you know what? It's funny. I have not. Okay. My husband, my husband got really into it. We have her cookbook. Like everything is like every, every time he cooks something, he talks about it has to have salt, fat, acid, heat. I mean, it's it's an amazing premise. It, like especially if you like like to cook by the seat of your pants, like I choose to. It's, right. You know? well, and, and I'll say this about that show on net it's on Netflix it's four hours one for each of the words and uh and it's beautifully shot so and one of them it's shot in Italy and um and so she was uh she was in Italy she sp seems to speak Italian that I think is her language uh though I think and I haven't seen it in a while but I like to think she's Armenian but that's because I was raised to look for Armenians <laughs> and um, <laughs> the uh, but I don't she... the Armenian and everybody <laughs> uh, good or bad that's sometimes yeah. good uh, that is sometimes not as anyway so but the uh, turns out humans but um but I will say that the one of the things she mentioned in the Italian one was that uh, when you get fancy olive oil, she was talking about how some people get fancy olive oil and they save it for for good things. And the Italian woman she was talking to, she said, it'll go bad. What are they saving it for? <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, I didn't know olive oil went bad, but it makes sense. I mean, I, I suppose, you know, they say that the same thing with butter, because unless we're in intense heat like we are now, I, d I tend to leave my butter out at room temperature. Yeah, um, and they say that like oils will go rancid. I, I don't know if I've experienced that, but but like like I I am a house that when we started quarantine, um, and I was like looking around like what do I need to stock up on and and uh, whatever. I I am a house that has five olive oils in it. Like, 
<laughs> Wait, but not, but not opened. Five opened olive oils? Um, no, or no. backup. Got, no. You got backup I've, olive oil. I've got, I've got backup like olive oil, but also I've got like, I have my cooking olive oil. Okay. And then I've got several bottles of fancier like dipping sauce or finishing olive oil, that kind of stuff. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. let us get into it because yeah. uh, I have been, it's been explained to me more than once. Let us explain it to me possibly two or three more times. Olive oil, virgin olive oil. What does it all mean? What are the differences? Do you remember? Oh you know, the extra virgin olive oil, I, I honestly don't know exactly what it means. It's, um, you know, I do know that, for example, like, uh, you know, and, and kind of like with wines, there's blends and then there's like single vineyard things. Um, um, so that like what what happened, like the big olive oil scandal that came out. I love Italy is the place where they have crazy like political scandals um, and then also food scandals. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, did you what hear about the, the olive oil? Problem? Okay, go ahead. There was a thing about counterfeit olive oil um, that they're saying like this is, you know, Pugliese or whatever, uh, Sicilian olive oil. And it turns out like it's not even from Italy. It's this like crazy blend of, so now like some things are labeled like Mediterranean olive oils, right. um, you know, because it's, it's one of those things like you, you know, and it's the same thing with wine, right? You, you take your lesser grapes, the stuff that, you know, maybe hasn't been tended as well or, or just didn't have a good year. And that goes into your, your lesser wines or your blends or, or whatever. And then you've got like your more refined stuff. Um, like sort know. of the perfect olives. Somehow, somehow there's better olives and less better olives to make olive oil. And right. there's- Yeah. Okay. He, better olives better regions better growing patterns um in terms of like the stuff that's just kind of mass produced versus you know it's, it's all small like everything is small batch artisanal right like how well <laughs> right. some, you know yeah like, yeah and and you you know olives are one of those things and in the olive oil you, you like like wine you can taste the terroir you can taste um what is terroir, know, terroir what is that word ground it's okay you know, and, and here's, okay, here's a fun side note for foodies. Yeah. Um, so, so in, with oysters, oysters are a similar thing. Oh, Jesus. How did that... <laughs> um, that's a brand new phone too, that just like spontaneously fell on the floor. Some, some things just fall sometimes. Yes. Some things going on. Um, <laughs> so with oysters, like, you know, oysters taste differently, depend on where they're farmed, you know, East coast, West coast, that sort of thing. Cold water, warm water. They call that marwar for like, you know, like mare being sea, raw okay. of the, you know, whatever. So terroir is of the earth. Marar mm -hmm. is the water it's grown in, which is kind of cool. But you okay. can taste the different subtleties of, was this a hot climate, a mountainous climate? Um, what's in the earth? Is it clay? Is it mineral? Uh, that kind of stuff. I used to know dudes who could tell where the pot was grown. Um, that's right. So it's like that. It's, it's the like terroir. <laughs> the terroir of the pot. Yeah. Of your marijuana. All right. Uh, yeah. And, and also how it was grown. Like, was it, a, was it, you know, did it get a lot of water? Did it get a lot of heat? Like you can also taste that on some of these things. So when you get some of these, like, you know, when you like look at like an expensive bottle of small olive oil or something, um, you know, you can smell like some of them are grassier. Some of them have a more peppery finish. Interesting. <clears throat> And I don't know as much about olive oil as I do about wine, but I do know that that's like where it came from, how it was grown, you know, that all of those things factor into it. And if you, yeah, yeah. If you go someplace like Italy, if, you know, back in the day when we went places and moved about freely and interacted. Oh, is that, that wait a minute, that's a restaurant, Italy. Uh, well, Italy is like, it's- I it's thought you were saying Italy, Italy in a fancy way, oh. but that is a place. <laughs> if you go to Italy, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Nope. She was yes. talking about an actual uh, d a destination. What is it? So it's so funny. Like, so, you know, Mario Batali and, and Joseph Bastianic and their whole sort of food consortium a couple of years ago came up with this concept called Italy, like literally E-A-T-A-L-Y. And okay. it's this Disneyland. It's the target for foodies, right? It's this okay. Disneyland of there's restaurants, there's butcher shops, there's, you know. Oh, it's a mall? But it's a but it's a fancy pants like e e eatery kind of mall. 
to get yeah. all the things from stem to stern, like the whole farm to table kind of moment. Sort it, of. It, it, it's everything. You go in. There's two different espresso bars. There's uh, like a gelateria. There's you know places for pizza. There's fancy Ooh. restaurants. Okay. Uh, yeah. There's and you can get goods there. You can get produce and cheese and imported stuff. You can get like you know the the bath products. You can only I bought deodorant there. Like they, you can only get in Italy. <laughs> You know? fair, enough. fair enough live it up it does yeah. sound like a fancy destination you're just like let's go to italy <laughs> and you're like and you could browse and then you could have lunch or you can nosh and you could browse and and then you could buy a bunch of, of uh kind of cool like artisanal like okay. very specific foodie right. stuff things that you can only get over there and and you can browse and eat like and there's samples and and whatever and they let people like they just now sell wine when you walk in and you walk around. it's like a casino right you're right. walking <laughs> with your booze shopping it's it's a, and like my chris and i you know my, my husband and i are both italophiles we resisted this when it first started we were yeah. like you know that sounds like and now like we go there we're like Right. Because because at first you're just like, it feels like, oh, they're trying too hard. I don't want any part of it. And then you go and you're like, no, no, they're trying just the right amount. I need them. To, to, I, I need this. I need this. I didn't know I needed this. I, I ex That's exactly it. I didn't know that I needed this. Like, that's <laughs> what it becomes like. And, and you know, and, and it's hard to like leave without feeling like you're in a supermarket sweep, right? Like where right. you're <laughs> Right. But, it, you know, every time you walk in, you got to spend $45, right? I mean, I'm sure it's uh, just on stuff that you bring home. Oh, a little bit higher than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, because, cause again, you're like, you're stocking up, right? It's like, right. you're like, oh, well, you know, I need this olive oil. And they, they have, um, they have this like row of bulk olive oils and you can get a guy and he'll let you taste the different ones and tell you where they're from. And then you can fill up your own bottle and, um, huh. and pretty remarkable and then of course they have got the smaller like stuff that they import in their own bottles and that's its okay. own thing but right. um you know yeah i mean it's just it's like i said it's it's um you know it's you know uh, it's, it's very like, specific it's for very... foodies i guess exactly so <laughs> so so there's olive oil that you cook with mm -hmm. and that's just sort is it, does that have to be like I, I've heard that it doesn't necessarily, it should be a good olive oil, but it doesn't need to be the greatest olive oil because you're cooking with it. That's exactly it. And, and even within that, there are some like counterfeit things that happen. Like I, I bought a one in a big can, you know, and I was like, I just want to go for whatever's cheapest. I was at an Italian market and it was clear, which is a really bad sign. Like olive oil should always be a little yellow or greenish in hue, even though okay. Stuff. It just should have some sort of, it, it should have some color to it. It should have some color to it. And I was, so I was, I mean, when it, when it's clear like that, I was, I don't know, it looked like corn syrup. I basically, I recycled <laughs> it. I took it back to like whoever recycles oil. It was just like. Right. Yeah. Then you're a Honda hippie. <laughs> I'm like, that's <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm not cooking with this. <laughs> I like, uh, it's interesting. There was some huge scandal about California olive oil. Wasn't there? Um, or possibly, you know, I'm sure it was the same thing about stuff not being, you know, because there's grown where it says it's grown or, or sort of processed as it says it was processed, this type of thing. Absolutely. And, and in Europe, you know, with, with wine and also with food stuff, like you, I don't know if, you, if you're familiar with the restaurant in LA called AOC, um, not now Alexandria <laughs> Pazio Cortez. <laughs> wow. She is busy. Anyway, uh, it, what, what kind of restaurant is it? it well, so the, the term AOC previous to 2018 um, stood for, and I'm going to butcher it. It's a French pronunciation, Appalachian origin, something control, right? Okay. So what it is, is all the, so like in France, they have, um, Champagne you know, has to be from champagne kind of champagne thing. Champagne right? has to be from champagne and the food, things like the cheeses are AOC. Like they're from the or origin they say they are. Ah. In, in, um, in, uh, Italy with the wines, you have what's called a DOCG, a DOC, and then an, um, an IGT, which is just kind of like, it, and like what they are is they're, they're 
there are rules that are set up, like if you have something, a Brunello di Montalcino, for example, that's a DOCG wine, and it has to be grown in this area, it has to be grown to these specifications that it's like this percentage of this one grape and only a small percentage of any other grape, and you get your DOCG designation, and then the next one down's DOC, and then it goes on from there. Okay. Um, like in France, like one of their like lower level ones is called a vin de pay, which means like wine of the country side, okay. of the region, I guess. Um, a little bit of a well drink. Uh, <laughs> <they're> totally. <laughs> Like, you know, and, and you get like, you know, because my husband and I are snobs and we have nothing else to do with our time these days. <laughs> like, oh, that's an, I, I mean, it's an, it's fine for an IGT or what, you know, you tell yourself all sorts of snobby things like it's fine right. for a non-canon <laughs> Star Wars TV show. <laughs> um, but uh, Right, yeah. I'll read this fan fiction, but it isn't, it isn't in canon. I get it. <laughs> it yeah, exactly. Then. So, um, so yeah, so there's, so in Europe, um, and I think, is it Spain or Portugal? I think it's Portugal has the DO designation. Um, so it, it's all these sort of rules set up so that when they're selling these products, these, these agricultural products, people know they can count on a certain quality or something. And when right. you go beyond that, like there was a, there was actually a Brunello de Montalcino scandal also a couple years ago where people were not, you know, making it up to the standards and they were somehow getting the designation on it anyway. And I don't crime, know. crime, graft, grift, <laughs> bribery. I'm, well, they're billion dollar industries. I mean, it would make sense that there's probably some sort of bribery going on. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean you know what? Uh, yeah, exactly. Why, why wouldn't there be? I'm sure there's some idiot who's just like, well, maybe we could get this extra barrel in and I could make $12. And you're like, you live in a perfectly nice home and have a car. What are you doing? Uh, <laughs> there's no pride anymore. The pride of. So I want to ask this before because I wait. So wait, the AOC place, is that also kind of a, a grocery store where you buy things? No, I know, I know. It's disappointing. It's just a restaurant, but that's okay. where they got their name from, right? Like okay. they, got, they got their name from, they named it after this system of, you know. Oh, I see. So, so, so they're and, claiming that they, they, that they have this rating of, of restaurants kind of thing. Yeah, they sort like, of are right. psyched about it. Is it a really good restaurant? It is a very good restaurant. It, it's been around for a long time. They've moved locations like Sometimes I go when I like my mood meals, sometimes not so much. You know, the menu changes over the years, but it's a fine, like, now I think, is if it's still on the place in third by Cedars that I'm thinking of, it's got mm -hmm. this beautiful courtyard. It's like an older building. Like, Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very pretty. Um, it's, uh, yeah, what is your favorite Italian food? Do you have favorite Italian foods to eat versus cook? What are the... Um, oh, that's an interesting thing. You know, like, yes. I mean, ultimately... So, so there's a couple, this is really, I'm glad that you, I, I love that you're just like, give me all the minutiae you can. So yeah, please, <laughs> so there's two things. So I really enjoy, I really enjoy Tuscan food, which sounds very basic, but I've been to like every region in Italy almost. And whenever I go back to Tuscany, I'm like, there's just something about this. You know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of truffles in it. Um, a lot of like, uh, game meats, wild boar, rabbit. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And I and I tend to like, you know, um, if I'm going to eat meats, I tend to like more gamey braised meats, which they also do very well there. Right. Um, there's an there's a region called Emilia Romana, um, which is just north of Tuscany. It's okay. where um, that's the, super north Italy, is it not? My geography no, is it's mixed. Actually mid region, not like the, the real north of Italy is up near Austria and Switzerland and along the Alps and stuff. Right. It, it's, Bologna, the, this region's like actually south of Milan. Or okay. South, uh, southeast of Milan. So, um, so this, I mean, this region called Emilia Romana, and it's where Bologna is. Okay. Bologna, hence Bologna, um, where Bologna <laughs> sure. comes from. Uh, the more Seven down. years of Bologna sandwiches, Wisconsin. Guess what? Not good Bologna. Anyway, let's just keep going. You know, I still remember you telling me that story about, about about how your stepmother nailed the compulsories. Oh you know, man, like, holy! Like, <laughs> what would you like for breakfast and your lunch? Not think knowing it would be forever. Yeah. Forever, yes, it's true. That is a weird. That is a weird story. Anyway, go ahead. So well, so in Bologna, one of the cured meats in the region is the mortadella, which everybody knows because it's the the thing that looks like bologna and has fat cubes in it. Right. That's that I used to think was cheese. I would think I was in hope. <laughs> Oh, that would be the best. Um, really good. 
So, so this Emilia Romana region is like known as having the best food in Italy. It's where like Parmesan comes from, um, like um, extra vecchio balsamic vinegar, the kind that comes in a tiny bottle that they sell for a hundred dollars, like it's liquid gold. Wow. It's, it's truly like that thing in Harry Potter, the uh, Felice, uh, whatever, the, the liquid luck. It's like, oh. a, <laughs> it's like a bottle this big, $100, because it takes them 25 years to make. What's um, the name of this t- k- k- place again? What's the name of the, k- the area? Emilia Romana. Thank you. If we ever travel again, get yourself back there. It's, <laughs> it's, um, I, yeah. it's where they, this place um, called Zibello has, like there's a cut of prosciutto called um, uh, culatello that is supposedly like the best cut of culatello. And then I love town- prosciutto. <laughs> oh God, it's, it's, and there's this town called Zibello and there's a place there that supposedly makes like the best culatello in the world. Like this guy makes the culatello for like Prince Charles and all the fancy French restaurants, like a lot, um, I want to say wow. a lot of us, like, and you go in their cellar in each one of the culatellos that's hanging from it um, has like a sign on it saying who it's going to basically. And it's always someone fancy. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so they have like, and you know, there's like, it's got like, you know, I don't know that it's the most Michelin star restaurants per capita in Italy necessarily, but like you, we went to this restaurant when we were there and it's, um, and like it had a Michelin star and our waiter that day was the chef and owner. <laughs> we were like the only people in there because it was slightly off season. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and he's just coming out. He's waiting on us. He's cooking the food. He's got a Michelin <laughs> star. Um, so, so yeah, so they, I mean, I have had some amazing meals there. Um, and it all, it's also, yeah, they're good too. You get Tuscan right. food with them. What, uh, how would you... Like uh, a friend of mine, his mom is, they are, they are French and Polish and she loves rabbit. And she sent me an amazing recipe for rabbit. And I've since misplaced it because every time I go anywhere and look to buy rabbit somewhere, nobody's selling rabbit. And uh, I think we can get it. But oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Good. Because yeah. I, where, where can I get it? So there's a place in North Hollywood called Epicurus. Okay. It's on Sherman Way in Lancashire, I believe. It's in like, um, you, they, it's like in a, um, a basically, a, what do they call this? It's an industrial park. It's not oh. even, a, it like, it's like where there's like warehouses. Like there's a video game place there too. It's like. Oh my and, God. I know where that video game place. It's by there. Yeah. It's by there. <laughs> and it, it, it's like, you, you think like you're parking outside a warehouse and I know they're open right now. And, and it's, it's called not, Epicurious? Epicurious. Epicurious. And, Epicurious. And it's not very big, but they have a lot of specialty candy and different things cheese and all sorts of things that you can you know generally only get somewhere in another country and they bring them here and they I go now I go now I'd be right back no yeah. uh, that's awesome <laughs> and it's a freezer case and you can get a rabbit that's uh-huh. awesome how would uh have you prepared rabbit this this recipe seemed really good but it was a it was a red wine and it was reduced uh-huh. and it was very beautiful because you know it can be a little it, it can be tough it can or just a different consistency than chicken obviously yeah because um, it is an animal that has hoppity hop hopped in a different way um what oh, do you yeah. usually do or wh- how do you like it prepared i so the last time i did it i we we actually cooked it on easter um <laughs> <laughs> That is particularly hilarious. Well played. Yeah, I was, I would really like, sometimes you just do things to amuse yourself. Right. Um, you just, you, you, you got a half, you got 15 minutes and you think to yourself, yeah, this is funny. I want, I, I, and it's only funny for like a minute, but then you'll think back at it and laugh again. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's true. It, it's like, and I kind of put it on Instagram, like that I'd made a rabbit ragu and it was like, let's see who puts these two things together. That's, that's how I'm going to amuse myself in lockdown. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I just braised it one day, I think probably with white wine and broth and, you know, some vegetables, slow cooked it for a couple of hours. So it all basically broke apart. And then I used it on pasta as a ragu, um, just like as a meat sauce, no tomato, Mm -hmm. just a ragu bianco or, um, and I, how do you make a ragu bianco? That sounds just, like you're a not white... putting tomato in it. Like it's just okay. a white sauce, a white base, basically. Whether it's like wine or you know, right? And you don't do a, a little bit of flour for thickening, do you or no? I mean, you you can do a lot of different things for thickening. Um, 
you know, one of my favorite, like really quick go-tos if I want to thicken any kind of sauce mm -hmm. is I take um, a couple tablespoons of butter, a couple tablespoons of flour, basically just kind of a roux. And I just do Okay. Yeah, but I just and I just whisk it into the sauce. Like like, you know, you can if you're making a gravy start with the roux and do it that way, but usually if I'm like, "Oh, I'm getting ready to serve dinner and this sauce really didn't thicken like I wanted it to." That's yeah. like boom, like <laughs> bam. Yeah. So bam. And and do you have you made do you have a pasta maker? Oh yeah. So so what we did with the rabbit is we served some of it on on pasta mm -hmm. and then we saved it because you know it was like I think a 3 pound thing and there was just the two of us and yeah. um we saved it and then the following week we you know we froze it and the following week or whatever we took it out we took what was left we pureed it and we made ravioli with it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, or maybe tortellini. Maybe we did the tortellini with it. Um, and so you, you can make, because I have made pasta possibly twice, probably once. We had a pasta maker. I was like, uh, let's give this to someone. <laughs> and uh it was a beautiful pasta maker it was it was a it was a hand okay, crank one and um which of course makes it harder but but actually you can control it seemed to be easier than uh it's just easier to control but i don't making dough is not my favorite thing to do uh so but you, so yeah. you make uh do you make strips and or do you make uh ravioli as well yeah, I mean, we, so I have the attachment that goes on the KitchenAid, which is okay. slightly, um, I, which is, you know, easier because it's, it's um, mechanized, right? Like you're not cranking it at the same time you're feeding it because it is like, like, look, have I, have I melted down in tears making pasta in my life? I'm not going to lie. It's happened. <laughs> like, <laughs> my marriage almost ended. Have we sworn we were never doing this again? Like, yes. Right. Because it, it it's frustrating because you're like, I want to do this. This is the thing I, this, I'm going to be this person. You know, I, when we first went into quarantine, I started making yogurt and I was like, it's not working. It does. It's just, I made kefir. I made, I made tan, which is this Armenian drink out of yogurt. And I was like, and I don't, I don't even like yogurt that much. What am I doing? <laughs> so right. Right. There it's in. And I think that, you know, the thing is to keep it manageable, like we were, we were making fettuccine for, I'm not kidding, like 10 people. Like it was like, that was, it was okay. too much. And, yeah. and we, were trying to, we were making it from scratch. It's like, now we know if we're going to make pasta, we're like, okay, we make like a two or three egg dough. It's like a cup or so of flour. It makes like enough for us for one night. And then we can freeze whatever's left for like another a, you know, another serving for both, right. both of us. But it's not, we're not sitting there. Like we were sitting there, we had, we had fettuccine hanging off of every surface in the kitchen trying to dry it. <laughs> like chairs and, and everything. And it was sticking and, you know, it was yeah. just never ending. It's like, you can't do that. Too so. big, too big. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, so. we, we planned too big. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, so now we know. Keep it reasonable. To, yeah, okay. Reasonable. And Fair also, it, I mean, you know, obviously in, bef if, you know, before times, like we've also done it with people where we're like, okay, everybody's rolling their own dough. Everybody's like kind of cutting their own stuff so that you kind of yeah. share the work a little bit and, you know, you have an activity and you learn and that's nice. Yeah. My grandmother used to make lots of a thousand of these things called manta or monte, and they are Armenian dumplings that look like wing nuts and they're about the size, they're about an inch long. So they're to make a thousand of them is it hurts it hurts yeah. your back it hurts your shoulders but she would have like three friends over and they would make as many as possible and then they'd split them up and she would end up with like 800 or a thousand manta at the end of it and um and we would eat them like popcorn and she would become enraged yeah. and uh <laughs> she's like oh, this took four hours uh stop yeah. eating them they're going in the soup okay, yeah. so, <laughs> so, no, no it's true it's it, it's like, you know, rolling out the gnocchi or anything. Anything's fun when you first start it. And then when you're like on, you know, whatever. It gets, <laughs> it's, it's just like, too no, much. It's yeah. Too much. And uh, so um, I love the idea of of cooking, cooking a rabbit sort of like a pork roast where you cook it until it just kind of falls apart off the yeah. bone. And then... And then do you just sort of take it like you don't debone it because you want you want to cook it with the bone, right? Yeah, because that'll give you the broth, too. And we might I'm trying to think if we save the bone and try to make a stock out of it afterwards or if like after you slow cook it, 
kind of toast. I Do, have remember. you ever made that Italian? I'm going to say it wrong. Chiappini? Chiappino? Uh, the, the fish oh, stew? Um, uh, no, um, mostly because I can't eat tomatoes. <laughs> oh, they're super acidic. If you if 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 you're my sister has uh, trouble with tomatoes. She can uh, like very rarely she can eat a tomato. Yeah, it's um it's I have an allergy, so I haven't been able to eat tomatoes in quite some time, which is hilarious because when you tell people that and they're like, and you go to Italy, and I'm like, Italian food is more than just tomatoes. We're <laughs> so, <laughs> right. break this to you. <laughs> they, they have tomatoes, but that's oh, not just tomatoes. It's not so. just tomatoes, and and also tomatoes are. It's like I mean, obviously they make them into paste and can them and things, but like it's also they they eat very seasonally, so mm -hmm. they're not in season the whole year. Either. Oh, I have spent the entire summer eating tomato sandwiches because uh, we have a <laughs> garden and uh, we got tomatoes and. I, that is one of, but I've actually recently been like, yeah, these are a little acidic. I got, I it, like, I feel like I'm going to get gout. And uh, <laughs> so, but um, yeah, so, the but you, do it. <laughs> right. But the, the, uh, the gout. will it? Well, they say game meats are one of the things that give you gout. Oh, interesting. Uh, or, or can exacerbate it or whatever, if you have a propensity. Um, wow. Yeah, look at yeah. me with the big words. Okay. So. <laughs> I know at 11 a.m. when you're not even through your coffee yet. I know. I'm just uh, all right. So, but the, but I don't think that seafood soup has to have tomatoes in it. I think you can go with other other veg. But um, oh, you maybe, know, maybe it, maybe it does. And but, so many things are like so specific. Like there's, you know, when you think of chicken cacciatore, you generally think of chicken that's cooked with among other things tomatoes, right? Yeah. Um, in Rome and only in Rome, they do a cacciatore, which is just vinegar. Um, it's like, it's vinegar, or maybe a little bit of onions that oh, get like wow. browned or caramelized or something as they cook it. And it is like, the, and, and probably white wine, right? If I'm being yeah, honest, yeah. white wine, but it, it's very vinegar based. Yeah. And it is the most amazing, like, you get the taste on your lips and it's still there like two days later. You're just like, oh my God, I, I, if, you, if that's in your flavor profile, you're like, this right. is the best. And so it's, it's, and so like, even like, I'm sure with a Chopino, it's like, oh, in this region, they do it with tomatoes, but in this region they don't because they, you know, it's not something they yeah. have. I think I had it. Um, this is going to sound fancy. We were in Venice. We had it in Venice and it was the most delicious thing I've ever had in my life. <laughs> and um, and I, I came home and I recreated it and I did pretty good, pretty good. It was, uh, you know. But it was, um, I don't, I don't know that it had tomatoes in it, if I remember correctly. But, um, but that is, that is interesting. Um, have you ever been to Naples? I've always wanted to go to Naples. You know, I have only been through it. Okay. I've, um, I've gone. It's supposed to be dodgy. That's where I want to go because it's supposed to be a little, a, a, a little skid ball, which will remind me of the road. Um, and... <laughs> well, no, it's it, right. It's it, it. That's you know. That's the, there are people who like love it and adore it, and people who that's the knock on it. And you know, I've found that Italians, much like Americans, tend to look down on whoever lives directly south of them. <laughs> like you know, in America, it's like. You know, you go oh, Alabama, <laughs> but then if you get far enough south, New Orleans is the best. Yeah. And you're like, stop, just just go to the place and be nice. Yeah, yeah. It, like the people in Venice think they're better than the people in Tuscany, and the people in Tuscany think they're better than the people in Rome, and the people in Rome tell you that the people in Napoli are always working an angle. You know, <laughs> um, it just uh, goes on down to Sicily, right? Um, and uh, we have and those our, guys hate Algiers. What? What just yeah. happened? <laughs> no, I mean, it's true. We will always, you know, have our provincialism to like unite us, I guess. Um, but they, um, so I have been, I have been like, I've been through Naples, like to the port of Naples because I've gone to Ischia, which is an island off the coast and you get there through a ferry that, you know, from Naples. And I have been south to um, like I've trained I've been to the train station because I've been south to like Amalfi Positano that whole area the Amalfi coast is supposed to when I went to Italy and Andy and I saved up and that's where we went for our our, um, our honeymoon we went oh, to Venice and, and Florence he had never been to Italy we spent uh, 10 days in each it was very glamorous and uh, very yeah. exciting 
What a great and, way to do it too. Yeah. Cause um, yeah. I like to spend a longer time in a place and become a semi regular at a coffee shop yeah. and pretend that I live there. Uh, so <laughs> the, uh, um, so but, do it though, I think, you know, yeah, cause then you get to kind of see it and we have, we have genuine memories of the whole town for a while, you know? And, um, so the, um, the woman who gave my friend Stefan's mom, who gave me the ra ra rabbit recipe, she was like, she's not going to the Amalfi coast. Don't go. It's a waste uh, to even go to Italy and not go to the Amalfi coast. So was it beautiful? Oh, oh she said, to me, if you were cool, I thought she was telling you not to go to Amalfi, but she's saying, if you're not going to Amalfi, don't even bother going to Italy at all. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Um, it is beautiful. It's it, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, the, the thing about Italian, the, 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 you know, the, the country as a whole is that it's a peninsula that's like from volcanic soil. So it's, you get the beauty of the, um, of the, something that's on the sea, but also just all the dramatic, you know, cliffs and, and things built into the side and the mountains and things. So, so it is gorgeous. It, you know, it tends to, towards, um, it tends to the touristy, obviously, because it is really beautiful. But even within that, like, you just need to like, I, we always think like if you just do some research and find some deep cuts that people aren't doing, like like Ischia, for example, like we did a couple of nights in, you know, we've been to Amalfi a couple of times and always do a couple of nights there and, and a Pompeii thing because Chris loves like ancient, Chris had a reader, Chris studied Latin when he was like a kid and had a reader. Me too, me Pompeii. too. Yeah. See, you guys like, yeah, you two should talk about it someday. He's, yeah, yeah. We, um, so we, you know, we did the whole Pompeii thing and that's cool. And then we went to this island called Ischia, which, you know, especially in the summertime, is still going to be full of tourists, but they're not Americans. <laughs> okay. Like, so you get, you feel like you're doing something. You don't Else. feel like you're just with a bunch of people with fanny packs and, you know, complaining they can't get a Germans coat. got fanny packs. They got fanny packs. Anyway, so I get you. <laughs> Yeah, and there is, there's, um, you know, yeah, and Europeans are there, and not, yeah. and like every time, but it's, it's nice enough, like where you're like every time we did hear someone speaking English with an American accent, we were like, how did you find out about this place? Because like no one, you know, yeah. you just didn't hear it, which is a nice, you know, it's why you go to. Well, it, it's why you're traveling. It's kind of exciting. So, yeah. are there specific? I always wonder between France and Italy, you know, sort of the big foodie kind of destin. Not that not that the food isn't beautiful in other countries, but between those, what are the sort of uh, spices in in those kind of foods that I think of as more Italian than French? You know, sort of like an oregano or marjoram. But I think like the French use those. Well, you know, I think it's so funny. I'm reading this book right now called Dirt. That's about French food and, and the food in Lyon specifically, which is like oh. supposedly like the big food capital. That's where we went. That's we went last, last October. Um, oh. We saved, I, I've been trying to get him to go to Paris forever. And he was like, I want to go see those cave paintings in the middle of France. He doesn't talk like that. Anyway, and uh, and so I was like, okay, so we'll fly into Lyon. We'll spend like four or five days in Lyon. And we went around and we got to see Roman ruins and stuff. And then we went and saw the cave paintings in uh, and this cup, by the way, when you pour something hot into it, it's from the cave and the cave paintings show up. Oh, anyway, wow. Oh, cup. so cool. Oh. Very fun. And, and then we went to Paris for a week. So, uh, but because I have always wanted, I spent too many years taking French to never go to France. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I wanted to offend the entire nation by trying. So, um, so we went to Lyon and you, but you were about to tell a story about the food in Lyon because it's, oh. it is the foodie capital and it was amazing. So, so, so this journalist, Bill Buford wrote this book called Heat, which is one of my favorite books. Okay. And it's basically, he, um, you know, was a print, he was writing an article about like apprenticing under Mario Batali in one of his restaurants, pre Me Too, um, back then. And he ba it basically started this love affair with food and he ended up traveling to Italy several times and apprenticing with people over there to learning how to make pasta. And, and this whole, he had this whole great like sort of food awakening and dirt, which I'm not enjoying as much is which I thought I would is is about his sort of French journey, similar journey, but like French. He moves his okay. family to, to Lyon and he starts working in restaurants there. And 
So, so this has been a thing, and he writes about it in his book. It's been a long debated thing about the food between Italy and France. And the, you know, there's a story that says that Catherine de' Medici, when she married the <laughs> king or prince of France or whatever, mm-hmm. left Italy and brought with her all her recipes and her cook. And okay. that the Italian food got brought to Italy and then it became like Francophiled basically right. like over hundreds of years and things. Um, and, and there's all this debate and the French will tell you that never happened and <sighs> yada, yada, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, 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 you know, like, and, and he, he talks about it. It's kind of funny and everyone has their own theories about, but yeah. this is similar in that and it's trade routes and it's, sure. you want to, you want to talk about a dork forest, like talk sure. to the people who research this stuff. So, Anyway, I think, right, like, I think Italian food seems to be more, what we know of it today between attention, French and Italian food. Italian food is very much more spare and I think really just lets the ingredients speak for themselves. Um, Sort of less fiddly or you mean like? Yeah, yeah, like it's very... So I have a lot of food allergies. And when I started going, and I'd gone to Italy in college when they kind of weren't as bad and, and whatever. And so when I started going back, I, I had studied the language because I always wanted to learn the language because my grandparents mm-hmm. spoke it and no one else in my family did. And I thought that was a shame. Mm-hmm. So I had been studying and I also wanted to go back because I wanted to be able to communicate with people. And one of the things was about food, right. um, having allergies and things. So I went back and what's amazing is when you're reading something off a menu there, you know, it'll be like pasta with mushrooms and onions, you know, right. and you're like, okay, um, what's in it besides the mushroom and onions? <laughs> And yeah. they look at you like you're crazy. They're like, it's mushrooms and onions. Is this pasta with oh, mushrooms? Really? Yeah, it's on mushrooms and onions. And because in America, like that doesn't mean anything. That's a jumping off point for our food. Right, right. <laughs> mushrooms and onions. And you're like, well, it also has capers and it has, um, you know, a yeah. thousand other tiny, you know, well, there's a little bit of tarragon. What? What just happened? Uh, it yeah. Turns out it's like tarragon you, it's kills like me. Something that's got like watermelon and tomato and, you know, <laughs> and, and, you know if, and then whatever. we sprinkle MSG all over all of it. What? Exactly. We just... it, it's an orgy of ingredients here for most yeah. chefs because I think they don't know. I think our palates aren't refined, right? You know, we're drinking soda all day and then we're wondering why we can't appreciate good food. And then, and I think the chefs, you know, have to- Bam, raise. that, take that soda, take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I am talking to Tess Rafferty and it's at Tess Rafferty or at the Tess Rafferty on Instagram. Uh, just so you know, uh, this has been, this is super cool, but uh, I thought I would tell everyone again. Hi, Rachel. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah, in case you're just joining, welcome. Yeah. We're- um, so like, so the thing about Italy is that it's all about, and you know, in, in both these cultures, right. In most cultures, the good food came from peasant food and making do with what you had and what, you know, what was, it yeah, seen. it's just like, we're going to make you super poor. So you have to figure out what to do with that weed and <laughs> that, and the remnants of that animal. And then we're going to take it back a hundred years later and go, holy crap, this is amazing. And it's yeah, uh, charge people yeah. $50 a plate for it. So, I, you know, I, I think in Italian food, generally the, the ingredients sing and it's about like letting them speak, like having good ingredients, preparing them well, and then letting that be the most amazing thing. And, you know, so I what think- What are staples that are sitting in your kitchen though? Like if I came over and you didn't like, cause we're in quarantine, right? I, I'm constantly running out of food. And, um, and I don't, I'm scared to go anywhere, quite honestly. I don't like going into grocery stores and stuff like that. So no, I, I don't, I, I, we've been pretty strict here. We, we've either I get done delivered. Curb- yeah, no, we do too. We, we've done curbside or delivery. We haven't been in a grocery store since early March. Yeah. Um, um, March. So yeah. it's, you it's, know, it's just knowing how to like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky because we like to cook, although the dishes are getting to us. Um, <laughs> right, the consistency. I don't actually mind dishes, but some people freaking hate. Lori Kilmartin was telling me how much she she didn't know how, how much her mother really cleaned the house because her mother <laughs> just passed away of COVID. Right. And um, so her mom cleaned the house. Her mom did the dishes. And she was like, Place is, uh, place is pretty gross right now. And uh, I was like, so, but like we have a garden, we have a garden, right? So I have yellow squash, I have spaghetti squash, I have zucchini, I have tomatoes, I have uh, bell peppers, I have basil, um, 
thyme, oh, um, mint, and rosemary. And um, and then we have some Swiss chard, and uh, we have some uh, potatoes eventually. But what what oh, would you great. do with that? Well, okay, so the Swiss chard and potatoes, if you can get some beans, you can make a ribolita, which would be great for winter. Green beans or like a white bean? Like a white like bean. A, a white, a white bean. bean, yeah. And What's that's a ribolita. A ribolita is a bean soup that's got um, – you know, different kind. You know, different kind of greenery in it. Um, sometimes spinach, sometimes kale, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, and you can, and then you serve it over like a crusty bread. Um, oh, or you wow. can serve it over a crusty bread, or, or you know, you could just eat it without. Or you can put croutons in it. You know, I've been. Or doing you could it. just have a big bowl of bean and veg soup, kind yeah, of, with, but with yeah. potatoes and and greens of some sort. Exactly. And then, yeah. Oh yeah. And you cube the potatoes. So it's a potato bean soup. I forgot it, with, um, with greens and then, um, and, and yeah, I mean, we've got, we got 10 pounds of beans right now in my, you know, right. We all did backup beans. We got, uh, we got beans. We got, we got, uh, oatmeal. Andy was like, why do we have so much oatmeal? We eat oatmeal in the winter like three times. And I was like, what if we're stuck here? And I also have dried <laughs> beans coming out of my ears. So, well, and you know what I did? So I, I have a friend who had made me a bean soup last summer. That was just amazing. A white bean soup. And when I asked her for the recipe, she was like, told me like, Oh, and this is where I get my beans. Like talk about like the fancy the, beans, fancy beans, right? This company <laughs> called ranchogordo.com. And you know, in my head at the time, I was like, I don't need to mail order beans. <laughs> like, I, I don't need to go there. No, I mail order beans. They really aren't that good. Rancho Gordo beans? Ranchogordo.com. All right. And I, um, it's the best and it's easy. It's not easy in the summertime because of the heat, but I basically take these beans. Um, I, and you know, they've got all kinds there. I've been buying the. They have the canned best- beans or is it all dry beans? all dry beans i've been okay. doing and you know beans is one of those things that like cooking fresh beans it's like oh you're supposed to soak them the night before and whatever but if you I, we have an r2d2 instapot so oh, we're, we're okay yeah. you can do that i i the friend of mine passed this on to me i take the beans and put them in a dutch oven mm-hmm. i boil them for i bring them to a boil let them boil for about five minutes and like while they're heating up and boiling, I add like a quarter an onion, I add like a half a fist of garlic at least, some salt and pepper, fistful of rosemary, Parmesan rind if I have it, you know, just, just whatever. And wh- I boil them for five minutes, I put them in the oven at 325 and cook them for, you know, anywhere from two hours to three hours. You know, check them, make sure the water's not boiling off. Like you want them to thicken, but you don't want them to, you know, yeah. walk you, everywhere. Yeah, you got to have them soften. And, so wait, so you boil them and then you just sort of slow bake them like it's a roast. Yeah, just put them in the oven, like braise almost. And the great thing is, is like, as you know, when I check them every hour or so, I, you know, as they cook down, the onion and the garlic melt. So you can literally just stir it in and they just like dissolve. Um, and then at some point, Ooh, this is the, changing my life. This is, it's so good. And, and especially with like a, these beans and they're not like, you know, they're like five, $6 for a bag for a pound or whatever. Um, you know, you're going to eat them for a week. So it's like 50 cents a meal. Um, okay. They're a and, little expensive for beans, but for they're beans. not expensive for a meal. For a so, meal. Exactly. There you go. Um, and because beans are free. Like if I go to Super King, beans are literally almost free. But fancy beans are are not prohibitively expensive for meal meal talk. If you think about it, in, right? If you think about it in terms of a meal, yes. and so they and then like my favorite thing about when my friend sent me the recipe and she found it online, it was like um, like an hour or so into it, you add a couple of glugs of olive oil, which I love. <laughs> um, so yeah, so like, what, you know, it's like a probably a quarter cup, half a cup, whatever. I mean, it's a big pot of beans. But yeah. I just like add it, you know, to give it a little thickness and flavor as well. Give it a little yeah. fat along with your salt. Dude, I'm seriously doing this. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's really good and you can use it as a side dish you can thin it out with a soup you can kind of do something in between um uh, uh anyway yeah. yeah you could just eat a giant bowl of beans i used to eat <laughs> a lot more beans for some reason i ate, i there was a ja- for a year and a half i tried to go macrobiotic except oh. for the drinking anyway 
uh, but the uh, but the um, it was I was I love these Japanese beans called aduki beans. Adzuki. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're called adzuki beans, and sometimes they're called aduki beans. And they're tiny red beans, and they're yes. just and I I would buy them in bulk. Uh, dry and then the project that that was and then sometimes if I was feeling flush I would buy the canned ones because they're almost two bucks a can wow and, yeah um, that's expensive so th- for a can of beans that's expensive yeah. for a can of beans Whole Foods <laughs> co-op Minneapolis co-op so um, right but they the- they have a really nice sort of they have a really nice um, taste to them they're kind of they're 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 a great vegetarian kind of and then but what I do with beans one of the things I do with Uh, I learned that year and a half was I like to soak the beans overnight with a strip of seaweed called uh, kombu. And uh, what it does is it um, in the, in the macrobiotic book that I read about how to be a macrobiotic, very thick by an incredibly sexist Japanese guy who invented macrobioticism. (laughs) Uh, But he lived through Nagasaki. So you want to, you want to cut that guy some slack and he said, what he has to say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That guy lived. And so, but he, he said that it literally it takes the gas out of out of beans. yeah so, yeah kombu k o m kombu that's good to know because I have not been able to take the gas out of my beans <laughs> <laughs> I'm just but I'm just like whatever no one no one's coming over <laughs> right 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 and you've been married for some time so uh, he knows that you have bodily functions so yeah. um, it's all good yeah <laughs> we all have bodily functions it'll be fine uh, <laughs> it'll Rangers, all be fine. you know it's really okay. the least of like. I, I had a dream the other day that I was like working in an office and I was really, two things spoke to what's happening in our time. <laughs> one is that no one was wearing a mask and I was constantly upset. I was constantly like distraught about this. Like why is yes. no one in the office wearing a mask? And I couldn't stop picking my nose in front of people. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> and I was like, and I know what it was speaking, it's speaking to literally the fact that like we've, we're going full on feral, right? Like, you know, like, yeah, we're in our own worlds. Yeah. We're in our own worlds. We're like pants are optional. And, you know, yeah, yeah. I will say this is that, um, in the last 15 years or so, um, here's what, what the only time I have gas and this, here's an anecdote that nobody needs to hear, um, <laughs> is usually when I get nervous. And oh. so I, sometimes when I do television, <laughs> <laughs> and I've done television a handful of times. I will be nervous. And uh, you can't really do laps like I normally do if I'm nervous in a club where I can, I don't know, uh, spread any gas that I might be having. I, I can go outside. I can get away from people. I'm trapped yeah. next to essentially two union workers. Yeah. who Those poor bastards have to move the curtains aside. <laughs> and I am uh farting and yeah. so uh but what i like to do is I, I remember i did this at uh, last comic standing i was standing in behind the curtain and i had gas i had uh i had to fart and i did and i tried to do it as quietly as possible super stinky super stinky and i just kind of yeah. started looking at the the different male comics <laughs> Which wasn't fair at all. Wasn't nice. Wasn't fair. But I did it anyway because uh, I'm a lady. I don't have gas. How could I? How could you know I? I'm a she, the, her. Tess Rafferty, the, I'm a she, her. You're a she, her. In, in, the, in the long line of things that have benefited male comics over <laughs> like the years, I think this is a fair like take back. Like, <laughs> take yeah, you you can handle the you can handle the pressure, gentlemen. Yeah, uh, you should be able to make that work for you. I fully I fully applaud that. Yeah, just the just the looking around. We've all we've all done that. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. uh, I am writing down the words. I'm a she her. I don't fart. I blame the he, I blame the he hims. I'm doing that. I'm doing that in my gender joke. Uh, you can all look forward to it. Uh, okay, so. Um, we have talked, uh, f- I, I don't know, we, we have, you know, about five more minutes left. Is there, is there something about Italy or food or wine or um, that you want to, I that mean, I you've wanna... really given us some, uh, you've given me a lot. It's we awesome. have recipes, like we, I, I need the rabbit recipe, I have to tell you. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm, I got to find it. I feel really bad because she passed away, my buddy Stefan's mom. Oh. And it's in her handwriting because she wrote it out for me. And I'm sure he's, you know, so I might just have to call him and go, you got to talk me through it. And then when yeah. I find it, I'll take a picture and send it to you. 
but I have had rabbit cooked in red wine. It is, I mean, part, you know, it's funny, like part of the thing is even just finding, finding some of these recipes and finding one that's reliable. Like I, the, the cacciatore that you can make in Rome, that they make in Rome, I can't find a recipe for that anywhere. Um, really? Yeah. What, what makes it different than, my, it's, it's, my stepmother used to make cacciatore. It was really good. It was one of the three things she could cook really well. This is the chicken that's just cooked in like white wine, vinegar, and probably some onions or shallot or something. Oh, right. But, but you know, in that case, right, it's, it's kind of all about the technique. Like, you know, had, and... And uh, proportions and stuff like that. Yeah, it? yeah, it really is. And, and you can wing it. And I've done that before where I'm just like, I, I'll just take forever to try to figure out like how to make something like I had at some place. Yeah. Um, we were, we were in this place on, in Ischia, um, which is this, you know, the island of no Americans. And we, <laughs> we were doing a wine tasting. Um, our hotel had arranged for us to go to this place. Like, um, yeah. And it was beautiful. It was outdoors and, you know, it was a couple of hours and it was over sunset. And, and the great thing, one of the things I love about Italy in the summertime is that it doesn't even get dark till 930 at night. So you feel like you have this whole day that you could just do so much with. Yeah. And so we're like wandering around and, you know, it was a beautiful cheese plate where the owner of the vineyard had made some of the cheeses and cured some of the meats himself. And um, we didn't really have dinner plans. And the guy who was doing our tasting was telling us that like, Oh, they, you know, there's a beautiful like outdoor kind of pergola area where we were doing it. They're like, oh, people come in where, you know, they do a couple of people for dinner, like probably 10 people or something like that. Right. And we could see the owner's wife like out back and her and another one were like cutting the herbs that they were going to use to make for dinner that night. Awesome. And, um, and so we were like, can you fit two more? Because this seems like this is an amazing place to eat a meal. And like, this is going to be really good. Yeah. And, and the guy was so cute. He's like, uh, yes. I see if I can get another rabbit. <laughs> like he had to go get on his scooter and go to the people and like get another rabbit. Um, yeah. and I felt a little bit bad that day. Um, I hope vegans aren't listening to this. Um, right. I, I will, I will put it, I will put a, um, a, a warning that we're talking about, you know, the adorable rabbit and, uh, are. and I am eating, actually eating less meat. I gave up pork this year. So, um, I'm trying to, I'm very conflicted about it, but it was, but it was delicious. It was the most amazing meal. And it was like four courses and it was just took hours. And they, what they did was they, the, I guess it was like the second or third course was this amazing pasta, like all fresh, like, like wide flat, um, yeah. and it was cooked in a rabbit ragu, but there wasn't even a lot of rabbit with it. It was like a lot of onions that tasted like so cooked, they were almost caramelized. And like, you could taste the, the flavor, the brodo, the broth of it, but like and you got a little bit of rabbit meat. And then the last course was the actual rabbit that had just been wow. sort of glazed. And yeah, so that's, um, I was like, that's, that was a killer meal. It was one, like, you know, it's one of those meals you think about forever. Um, there's, yeah, there's, there are definitely those meals. And, Tess uh, Rafferty, this has been a delight. We didn't, I swear Thank to God, you. I want to get you back because yeah, it's been an hour. Uh, I, I want to get you back because uh, I just finished, uh, I have finished the Franny Fisher, the Miss Fisher murder mysteries. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was another, the, your other dorkdom were these murder mysteries on BBC and all this stuff. So please uh, email me uh, what are funny. I watched Brokenwood and the Miss Fisher, and now I'm watching Dr. Blake, and it's not as funny. But, oh, yeah. uh, but if you No, if you no, the, them, no the, the mystery is how Dr. Blake doesn't know he's gay. Like, <laughs> that's like the real mystery. <laughs> um, uh, you should check it. <laughs> I'm going to do a whole night of masterpiece uh, jokes, Jackie. That's, what I'm, that's my, um, watch Endeavor. I want you to, I want to say this and watch Endeavor. It's on PBS. It is the precursor to Inspector Morse. It's him starting in 1965. They're up to like 70 or 71 now. He's totally fucking hot. Um, the Young Endeavor. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. But we're going in our second hour here. Gonna have Tess Rafferty back, you guys. I love her like uh, like a sister. She is amazing. Find her at the Tess Rafferty at Tess Rafferty. You you get it. Yes. Anyway, thank you for doing the show, Rangers. You know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? 
If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh my God. We, why don't we just call that as the end of the show?